Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. When I'm working on people's taxes, a lot of times I'll give them a big surprise they weren't expecting when I say to them, I don't know if you realize this or not, but 85% of your Social Security benefits are taxable. And usually I get the express, wait a minute, Ralph, how is that possible? You know, those benefits, that, that was taxed when it was taken out of my check. And you know what? They're absolutely right. And every tax season, many older taxpayers are finding out for the first time that some of their Social Security benefits may be subject to tax. And here's where it gets complicated. And there's an article here by Dan Kaplinger, which ran on April 9, 2018. And what it says here, almost 20 million people get taxed every year on a portion of their Social Security benefits. And that's expected to rise as people work longer and receive more benefits. So let's talk a little bit of a history lesson and how did Social Security how did Social Security benefits become taxable? And this really started 35 years ago when there wasn't any income tax on Social Security benefits. And one of the things they thought, you know, they're dealing with a financial crisis for the retirement program and our wise lawmakers in Washington decided the idea that raising revenue from a portion of those who collect benefits might be enough to help preserve Social Security for the long run. So rather than making the Social Security taxable for everyone, lawmakers impose an income test. And here's how this income test works. The IRS looks at your total income from non-Social Security sources and adds in one half of your Social Security income. Now, that outside income includes not only wages and salaries, but also investment income like interest and stock dividends, capital gains on investments are also included, as is pension income you might receive from a former employer. Once you have that total, you'll need to compare it to the income levels that they mention in these tables. If it's greater than a number in the particular column that that you are associated with, then you can owe tax up to half your social security income. So what am I talking about here? So let's talk about this from the standpoint of 50% of your social security benefits being taxable and 85%. So if you're single head of household or a qualifying widower, as long as your, as your earnings that we talked about here in the calculation is less than 25,000, then, you know, none of your social security is taxable. But once you hit that, then 50% of your social security is taxable. Now, once you get to 34,000, 85% of it is taxable. So even though, you know, you may think, well, this is insane. No, Ralph, I've already paid tax on this. You're right. So when I see this happen a lot is let's say that you work for the DuPont company while you were working. Let's say you put a good 40 years in a DuPont company. You know, you've reached full retirement age at 66 and you're drawing your pension. Well, your pension may be 60% of your income or 60% of what you were earning. So let's just say your pension is, you know, 35000 a year. And because you had good earnings during those years, you know, you may have Social Security benefits of $3,000 a month. Well, there's another $36,000 in income. And then when you come to see me to get your taxes done, I say to you, well, let's take a look at these things. And I enter your, you know, your pension income. And then, hey, you know, let me have your Social Security statement. And a lot of times I'll say, well, why? why? Why do I need my Social Security statement? Well, here's why. So I do this, this you know, consultation, figure this out. And all of a sudden I say to them, well, I got good news and bad news. The good news is not 100% of your Social Security is taxable, but 85% of your benefits are. And that's because you're single and just your pension alone of 36000 results in you owing 85% of your Social Security being it's not taxed. It becomes 30, 85% becomes income to you. So you'd have your $36,000 in pension income and then whatever your earnings are in Social Security, multiply that by 85%. You pay tax on all that. Now, the reason that's a big surprise to people is because most people don't realize that and they haven't planned for that. And this can be a huge number in the first year of retirement. So let's talk about an example. What does this mean to the bottom line? If you're single and get equal $1,000 monthly payments from Social Security, taxable investments in a traditional IRA, then your total income for the year will be $36,000. However, to calculate the threshold for Social Security taxation, you'll take the $24,000 in outside income and then add half of the $12,000 in Social Security benefits, which comes out to $24,000 plus $6,000 or $30,000 total. Because that number is between $25,000 and $34,000 for a single person, up to 50% of that $12,000 in Social Security benefits you receive will be included in your taxable income. 
So that's where it becomes complicated. So now all of a sudden you've added $6,000 in more income. And let's say you're in a 20% tax bracket. Well, now you owe an additional $1,200 that you may not have been planning for. Now, it gets complex after that. You know, there, this is a theoretical maximum, but there's a formula that is, is used to derive this. And you can go to the Social Security website or you can go to the IRS website. There's a Social Security income tax calculator. Now, why is all this even something to discuss. You know, they talk about here as a retiree, there's only so much you can do to control your income and therefore whether your social security benefits will be taxable. Well, here's where somebody like me comes in. One of, what we do is we sit down with our clients and we talk about, oh, let's plan for this. So let's say that you're going to retire at your full retirement age of 66, but you've got, you know, money in your IRA. You've got money, you know, maybe in a 401k. You're getting a pension. Well, you may decide not to take your Social Security benefits until you get older and use your IRA money or use your pension money to live on and then hold off on getting those Social Security benefits until you've used up some of that money. And like I said, this gets complicated. And it, you know, it really requires sitting down with an accountant or a financial planner to decide what's best. You know, and this is where we we work with clients and say, okay, well, let's just assume that you are going to take your Social Security. Then we need to start talking about, all right, well, you know, should you withhold from Social Security? You know, a lot of people don't even know you can do that. Um, I'm always amazed how many people will say to me, uh, you know, what am I going to do here, Ralph? I said, well, there's a couple options. You know, option number one is you could you can make quarterly tax payments to the IRS um, if you live in Delaware. You don't have to worry about Delaware uh, for your Social Security. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is you can go right to the Social Security administration, they will withhold federal tax from you so that you can, you know, before you even see it, take care of that. But this all comes down to, you know, a a planning decision. It's not just something you can just throw out there and say, well, you know, we'll see what happens here. You know, it, it becomes a real problem. I have seen so many clients that are affected by this that I've really, you know, spent a lot of time, you know, in my pre planning with clients as they get closer to that full retirement age. We start talking about, you know, what are the income streams they're going to have. You know, we start talking about, you know, can we take a distribution this year from an IRA to avoid, you know, pushing more income? And it really gets complicated too, because, you know, it could be something as simple as you have had clients in the past that say, oh, Ralph, you know, I got to put a new roof on the house. So I'm going to take a withdrawal from my pension to do that. You know, and they may have never paid tax on 85% of their benefits from Social Security. Maybe they paid a little bit less. And then, you know, all of a sudden they take a $25,000 withdrawal to do a roof. And all of a sudden, you know, their their tax rate multiplies, you know, because now they've got, you know, that 85% threshold hit for their Social Security benefits. So we can plan for that if we know what to expect. You know, maybe we'll straddle a year. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you have to replace a roof and it's going to cost 20000 Well, maybe we'll take 10000 in year one and then take the other 10,000 in year two. And it could be as simple as, you know, taking one of them on December 31st and the other one on January 1st of the next year. But that's where sitting down with a professional and planning this out will really be helpful to you so that you'll know the answer to, are my social security benefits really taxable? You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRalph.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.